Well, the Trump administration trying to, to ease the, the, uh, the impact of retaliations from this trade battle, announcing $12 billion in aid to farmers who have been hurt, deliberately hurt, by the way, by China and other nations, and, and ironically, in violation of World Trade Organization uh, reforms. Of course, we know the goal here is to drive a wedge between President Trump and, his, and, and the, really the folks to help propel him into the White House. And knowing that the mainstream media and others will falsely jump on this and say, oh, man, what about the farmers? What about the soybean farmers? They never cared about them until today. Well, President Trump took care of that. But now the debate is, is it the smart move today? We know it's not capitalism 101, but is it the right thing to do in the midst of a trade war when China is trying to crush our farmers? Here now to discuss, we've got uh, Deneen Borelli. And Melissa Armo, the stock swoops uh, person, so of course, the name CRTV.com. All right, uh, let me start with you, uh, Melissa, because, you know, Wall Street, of course, oh, you know, this is not the right thing to do. None of this, according to Wall Street, is the right thing to do. The status quo is the right thing to do. Cheap labor, big fat margins, and stocks go up. That's great for Wall Street. But what about Main Street? What about the farmers? Should we allow them to suffer? Because it's not Trump, by the way. China is deliberately targeting them. Well, you're absolutely right. And actually, this came out today, but the market really didn't have a huge negative reaction. The market gapped up this morning. Great earnings from Google last night. The market held, had a short-term drop-off, but held up today. And I think overall, this is the right thing to do. We can't lose our farmers. Trump is supporting the American farmer. We need them. And, you know, if you think back 10 years ago, 2008, we bailed out the banks. Talk about Wall Street. We bailed out the banks <laughs> to the tune point. of $700 billion. Oh, And $12 since then, we've printed up three and a half that. trillion dollars to keep them afloat, huh? Right. How many, how many people watching the show got any of that money? All right, Deneen. <laughs> 2012, soybean uh, prices, metric ton peaked at $1,788. Uh, when Trump came into office, they were around 900 They actually went down to 850 Same thing with corn. They, uh, the prices peaked in, in 2012. Uh, in fact, on July 16th, down more than 50% since then. I never saw one story in a cover of the Wall Street Journal, front page of the Journal, front page of the Post, front page of the New York Times about the plight of the, far uh, the farmers, the corn farmers. I understand now that they're being used as a political tool, and that's why I think this was the only move that President Trump had, because the media and the pundits that don't want him to win this thing are being disingenuous about now their love affair for our American farmers. Well, sure, and I totally agree. And what, you, what you're seeing is selective outrage from the media in their reporting. I mean, you just laid it out perfectly. Uh, but what I see President Trump doing, yes, I, I know he's trying to do something for our hardworking farmers. A lot of them are family owned. Personally, I am not in favor of bailouts. I believe in a free market. But I do Is see it a free President market? Well, it would be if the, if the trade wasn't so imbalanced. And, and but it's not it would right be. now. I mean, do you think we're really in a global free market? It's because there are tariffs, there are trades, there are regulatory, uh, you know, there, there are fees, there are, uh, you know, all kinds of different things. Is this truly an honest to goodness on paper? Uh, on paper, would you say it was a free market? Well, it, we live in a free market society, so we have market uh, capability so our nationally with China and is a free internationally. Market. No, well, it's it's lop. That's what I'm trying to get to. It is lopsided. So this is the, what President Trump is bringing attention to. Americans really did not know about this to this magnitude, this depth, right. especially when it comes to intellectual property. So it's 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 bringing a spotlight on this issue, trying to get better trade negotiations. That is a great point. Deals with America because he's looking out for the forgotten men I, and I women. love that point because, you know, what a lot of purists are saying, Melissa, is that, well, we've always had these voluntary, you know, relationships. You sell us something, we give you something back. But I don't think Americans understood what was behind there, you know, the Wizard uh, of Oz sort of thing. What was behind this and what was actually going into this and what was going to happen them, to them for this Faustian deal for accepting all this cheap stuff, the majority of it, they'll go in a garbage dump anywhere in the next three years. I think Americans are reawakening. You could call it buyer's remorse. I call it a buyer's awakening. And, you know, I, I hope this thing is over quickly. I know we are the strongest economy in the world, and we should not blink. How do you see it playing out? Because right now, to your point, the markets aren't as afraid as the pundits tell us they are. No, I remember the markets really don't like tariffs, but the markets do love Trump. And in some regard, the markets almost have a little faith in Trump. I mean, when you look at these things that are happening, the markets are holding tough, and so is Trump. So you got to give Trump credit. He's trying to press this forward as hard as he can. And by him doing this, it's like a one up of you for the Chinese that it's saying, well, do whatever you got to do because we're in it for the long haul. But, and, and he's hoping to push it forward so it doesn't 
even last that long. How ironic that China is uh, the latest moves from China, lower taxes <laughs> and infrastructure. <Right. laughs> They're taking the Trump playbook, you know. If the Dems think the Chinese are so great, maybe we'll get infrastructure reform. Ladies, thank you both very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Well, America's second largest government agency plagued by controversies. We all know about it. Well, now they have a new leader, and a lot of people think we're going to see brighter days ahead. We're talking about the, uh, the veterans. We'll discuss it next.